So there's a lot of conflicting information out there in regards to the Oculus Link versus virtual desktop versus maybe the Rift apps. The main question is, which one looks the best and has the least latency? I've done a ton of research and most importantly, a lot of experimentation between all these different configurations in order to achieve the best gameplay, the best refresh rate and the best graphics fidelity. If you were confused as I was with all the options out there and all the conflicting information out there, then I hope this video clarifies what, in my opinion, is the best way to play the Oculus platform. So I've owned every type of Oculus type of device, all the way from the original Oculus, Gear VR, Oculus Go, the Quest 1, the Quest 2, and then the Rift S. So I think I have a good understanding of what are all the differences between all these devices. And in my honest opinion, since the original Rift, I think we've really downgraded until recently. I think the Quest 2 is finally the savior of the Oculus platform, but let me explain why I think it was a downgrade from the original Rift. And one really distracting and major downgrade from the original Rift was the refresh rate. I just remember that time when I was playing Oculus Go and I was trying to play the game Virtual Virtual Reality and there was the white background. The white background was flickering so much because the, ref the refresh rate was so low. I think it was 60 to 72 hertz and that flickering kind of makes it really hard to enjoy the experience because nothing is really smooth. When you move your hands, everything is very choppy. And the flickering had induced some kind of headache, some kind of eye strain. And of course, with the Rift S, we did eventually get 80 hertz, but still, that's not it's quite as smooth as 90 hertz. And finally, Quest 2 with some a little bit of modification with side quests, you can enable a 90 hertz refresh rate, which gives a very immersive, very smooth virtual reality experience while playing PC VR wirelessly. So this is kind of crazy. We've got all everything we wanted ever in life. We have wireless PC VR, great graphics, and we have 90 hertz refresh rate. This is an amazing time to be alive to play VR. So what about the Oculus Link cable? The $100 cable that's supposed to be really fast, has fiber optics, well, I think that's kind of a scam. First of all, you can just buy an alternative USB-C cable that will do the same job. I don't think you need to spend over $100, at least 100 Canadian dollars on this really expensive cable. It is a nice cable, 16 feet. I like that it's very flexible. I noticed that it's very high quality and the throughput when I was testing it was extremely fast, as you can see in the screenshot. But I don't think you're gonna get that type of throughput when you're playing video games. Recently, there was an update where you could go into the Oculus debugger tool and change the bit rate so that you can increase uh, the amount of data that is transferred over the wire so that you get a much better picture quality. And I did do this. I was playing around with the values from 300 to 500 uh, megabits. I did see it like an improve in picture quality, but the resolution and the kind of colors, the re re reproduction of the colors were terrible. And then compared to the virtual desktop, it's still not that great. So obviously there's some improvements and I know this is in beta, but the Oculus Link, the cable is too expensive. So go get the cheaper version out there. I'll put a link in the description down below for some links on some alternative solutions, but you're still tethered to a wire. And I think one of the worst things about Vo Oculus Rift or playing virtual reality in general was having to have a wire attached to you all the time. That just made it so cumbersome to get into VR. The friction to get inside was just really annoying. And not to mention, you always get tangled up or you just always feel that wire on your back. After having played wireless PC VR flawlessly on my setup, it is extremely difficult to play with a wire again. I just don't want to be tethered anymore. It's kind of like playing a 90 hertz smooth refresh rate and then going down to 72 where everything just feels more choppy, less immersive. I'm not sure why someone would want to choose Oculus Link unless they can't get a virtual desktop set up properly. Oculus Link has washed out colors, very low resolution, and the actual picture quality just isn't as good as virtual desktop. And of course, Oculus Link is in beta, so I'm fully aware of that. So perhaps they're gonna increase the resolution and just make things look a lot better in terms of the video quality. But even if they do that, you're still tethered. Wouldn't you rather wanna play PC VR wirelessly? So let's talk about latency. So far we talked about video graphics quality and how we can achieve the original Rift or the Rift S type of quality on an Oculus Quest 2. So what I mean by latency is, let's say you're playing Beat Saber and you move your arm really fast. How good is the tracking in terms of the response time? Does it look real? Does it follow? Does it track your hand in real time? And of course, people are going to suspect that virtual desktop is going to have, you know, really bad latency. Be being able to play Beat Saber is not going to be possible. However, that isn't to say that your gameplay experience is going to be bad. I've noticed that when I play video games on latency anywhere from 20 to 40 milliseconds on my very average setup, I found that Beat Saber was more than playable. Now, of course, Oculus Link is going to be maybe a tad better in terms of the latency because you're not going over the air, 
but I didn't really find a big difference between virtual desktop and the link to choose the link, especially with all the advantages that come with virtual desktop. In the end, I have to say that I'm going to go with a hybrid approach. If I want to play fast games like Beat Saber, maybe I'll play natively on the Oculus Quest 2. On the other hand, if I'm going to play a game like Half-Life Alex, where I don't have to be competitive or I don't have to swipe something within microseconds, then I, play, I think playing virtual desktop or the Oculus Link is more than adequate for playing virtual reality. So let's talk about my virtual desktop setup. Now this is really important to get right. And there's a lot of conflicting information out there, very confusing. There's so many different methods to like maybe get a dedicated hotspot to your computer or buy a five gigahertz or Wi-Fi six dedicated router to act, to make as an access point to your current network. All that stuff costs a lot of money, a lot of work. I kind of just used my existing network. I didn't really buy anything extra except for the actual software virtual desktop, which is worth every single penny. So my setup, I just have a regular router and typically all routers these days are going to have the five gigahertz channel, which is like the faster short range kind of burst uh, high bandwidth type of channel you want to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my other devices in my home and just switch them to 2.4 gigahertz because I don't really care about them like my phone, my tablet, my Google home, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make them all 2.4 gigahertz because that's more than adequate for, you know, Netflix streaming, for example. This will clear all the traffic so that my Oculus Quest 2 can connect to the 5 gigahertz channel directly to the router. Now there's one key aspect about this that I think other people might get tripped on. I have my desktop computer directly connected into my router through you know, using an Ethernet cable. I think a lot of people will have an issue with this because they're going to be using their computer wirelessly. And having two wireless connections, one from your computer to the router, and then from your router to your Oculus Quest 2, of course, I think that might introduce some latency that you probably do want to avoid. I think it's very cheap and very feasible to move your router or your modem close to your computer so that you can attach it with an ethernet cable. So once you achieve that, you can just simply have your regular home network. You don't have to buy an extra router. Everything's working well for me. So please let me know in the comments down below. Why, why are these all these people telling you you have to buy a dedicated router or like do all these crazy configurations, you know, maybe put a, a new network PCI Express, uh, PCI card into your computer to hook it up directly to your Quest 2. It just sounds really convoluted, very complicated. I'm just using my regular home network. Uh, I don't know why this was over-engineered. So perhaps maybe I can get better performance if I went out and bought a $200 router and connected directly. But so far, this has been working really well for me. I do want to make an honorable mention that if you live in a big home, unlike me, I live in a very small, tiny uh, apartment building where my router is pretty much in the same room with everything else. So maybe that's why it's so easy to achieve this network configuration. But if you live in a massive home, good for you, you're very lucky, but you might have to do some extra steps such as the ones I had mentioned before to achieve the best gameplay. Or maybe you have to just dedicate a computer to a room with your network router. Now in terms of the software configuration of virtual desktop on the Quest and on my desktop, let me show you what exactly I picked to get results that I think look very smooth, 90 hertz refresh rate, and very good video quality. So on your desktop, you're going to have the virtual desktop streamer. And as you can see here, I have the preferred codec set to H.264. This is a codec that is less CPU intensive. The other one, the H.265, is very CPU intensive, but may give you better picture quality. I found this to be kind of very smooth in, in my experience. I, I left everything else default but I unchecked automatically adjust bitrate that was affecting my, my picture quality. So make sure you uncheck that. So let's dive into the actual virtual desktop Oculus Quest 2 app. As you can see, we have virtual desktop on the Quest and we are on the streaming tab. This is where you actually control the graphics quality when you're playing video games. Ignore the desktop in, uh, settings, that's not really important. So here you can see my VR graphics quality is set to high. And then my VR frame rate is set to 90 frames per second. And then I set my VR bit rate to the highest possible. So it's 149 megabits. On the advanced option side, I've enabled slice encoding and uh, increased color vibrance. I guess that's just the default. If you don't enable 90 hertz refresh rate on your Oculus Quest 2, then I recommend just setting it to 72 frames per second because you'll be wasting the actual frame rates that you won't see. By the way, you can check the nominal speed between your Oculus Quest and the router. And right now I'm at 866 megabits per second. And this is what you'll get on a five gigahertz channel through your router. This is the type of setting you definitely want.
And for the last setting you probably want to do is go get side quests. There's lots of tutorials on how to install this. Then go to the settings page and then you'll se select the refresh rate at 90 hertz. And this is going to enable it on your Quest 2. If you do restart your Quest 2, it will reset to the default, which is 72. You'll have to do this every time if you physically turn off the device. But if you let it sleep, it'll always stay on 90 hertz. Now, one major caveat with the refresh rate set to 90 hertz is that Oculus Link does not work. At the time of filming this video with the current software I have, every time I tried to open Oculus Link, it would crash. If you have your virtual desktop set up, who cares? You don't have to use Oculus Link because it's not as good as virtual desktop. You much rather enjoy a wireless experience at 90 hertz. Another underrated benefit of virtual desktop is that the experience of getting into VR, playing your games ASAP, is a lot easier than that of Oculus Link. With Oculus Link, you obviously have to connect the wire, which is annoying, and so it's one extra step, and then you have to go into the UI and then enable Oculus Link and then have everything load. It's kind of a slow process, whereas Virtual Desktop, you just simply launch the native Virtual Desktop app on your Quest, and then you can just select the game and you're ready to go. Now, there's one major caveat to playing PC VR on the Quest or Quest 2 platform, whether you're playing on Virtual Desktop or Oculus Link. It's that your computer needs to do the extra step of encoding the video, which will obviously take up more CPU cycles and in some cases GPU cycles. This can slow down the performance of your actual gaming. For me, it was not absolutely clear which one between Oculus Link or the virtual desktop would have more strain on your CPU resources. I found both of their encoding mechanisms to be somewhat similar, with the exception that virtual desktop was outputting better picture quality and a higher refresh rate. Now I'm actually on an i7 8700K, 32 gigs of RAM. I'm using the vanilla plain GTX 1070, which is ancient in today's world. I found that my performance was pretty good and I didn't have to really change any of my graphics setting. And this is quite amazing because this is a three year old computer setup that's considered very old in, in these days. So you, if you have a newer setup, you'll probably be fine. But obviously, if you're going to be playing on an older computer, then it might make sense just to get the Rift S because you don't have to do that extra step of video encoding. Because I'm using the older generation of the video graphics cards, the 10 series, I wasn't able to see if using the newer generation, the R20s or the R30s that have a dedicated hardware encoder called NVENC, I'm very curious to know if there's going to be a significant performance increase when I use virtual desktop or even Oculus Link on those new dedicated graphics cards. I'm going to try my best to obtain an RTX 3070 graphics card, and I will update this video if I do find a performance boost in terms of latency and an overall graphics quality using the new generation of NVIDIA cards. So that concludes our video. In my opinion, I'm obviously going to be sticking with virtual desktop. I find that being untethered to PC VR experiences is a much better experience, smoother experience with better graphics fidelity and latency than the Oculus Link. Now, of course, Oculus Link has a lot of room to grow. Obviously, it's in a beta feature, and I do believe that it will get better over time, especially when it comes to increasing the resolution. But for now, I'll be enjoying PC VR wirelessly through virtual desktop. I have a question for you. I'm very confused as to why Oculus just simply did not create this technology, the virtual desktop technology, instead of dedicating all their time into Oculus Link. It's kind of confusing. Yes, it's likely that Oculus Link is more accessible for more users because it's easier to set up, but I was able to get my virtual desktop set up flawlessly on a regular home network that probably everyone has. It's very likely that everyone has a 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz multi-channel router. I'm hoping that Oculus will make this technology official so we don't have to go through SideQuest. And I'm hoping maybe one day virtual desktop will be bought up by Oculus and everyone prospers in the end because we're getting native support for wireless PC VR gaming, which is the way to go into the future. No more wires, please. Please let me know in the comments down below which setup is best for you. Did you find Oculus Link better than Virtual Desktop? Or are you going to stick with native PC VR gaming, such as staying with a Rift S? I'm very curious to know. Please let me know if you have any questions on the setup. I'm happy to help. If this video helped you at all, please do give a like. And definitely check out all my other previous VR-related content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.